everyone and welcome to this extraordinary um, Board Council meeting uh, today, the 28th of February. There's some housekeeping rules. Firstly, a brief health and safety introduction. We are not expecting fire drill, but if the alarm does sound, please make your way to the nearest fire exit. The emergency exit at the back of the chambers will take you across the roof and down the fire escape and take care as the steps can be slippery if wet. Or you can exit the way you have entered the building through the police station and out of the front or back door. If it is not possible to get to an exit, then the lift lobby is a safety zone in the event of a fire. Under no circumstances should the lift be used. <coughs> Please make sure that all mobile phones and devices are switched off or on silent, please. Any individual wishing to video or audio record the meeting may do so. I must inform you that this meeting is being videoed by the Council and will be uploaded to the Council's YouTube channel. Please remember anyone wishing to speak in the public participation part of the meeting should raise their hand and wait for me as chair to gesture for you to speak. You will be given a maximum of four minutes to make your representation, which should be aimed at me as chair. Please state the agenda item which you will be speaking about. <coughs> Through me as chair, council members or officers may then respond to your uh, point if necessary. You will not automatically be able to reply unless I say I know you to do so. All public partition policy and other helpful policies are available. To all present, please remember to show respect to others in the meeting and avoid interrupting where possible to enable others to follow the meeting. Anyone uh, present felt to be behaving unacceptably will be excluded from the meeting by the chair. Any member of the public looking to leave the meeting should wait for the council officer to escort them out of the building. Thank you. Um, if we can just have a moment of silence so we can reflect on uh, tonight's evening and also say a few thoughts for Councillor Goodman who is ill in the hospital. Thank you. Item one on the agenda, apologies for absence. Councillors, <coughs> Fairfield, Goodman, Lip Free, uh, Freeman, and White. Thank you. Item two, disclosure of interest. To do with any disclosure members of any disclosure of pecuniary interest and interest other than pecuniary interest as defined under the Seaboard Town Council Code of Conduct and Localism Act 2011 in relation to matters on the agenda. Item 3, Public Participation. To deal with any questions or brief representations from members of the public in accordance with Standing Order 3 and the Seaport Town Council policy. So we would like to uh, make a point there, making the appropriate that was the time. Yeah. That was the time, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Um so we would like to address I think it's item five on the neighbourhood plan. Yes. Okay. So um speaking on behalf of the Downs Development Neighbourhood Voice, we respectfully acknowledge the immense amount of hard work, energy, research and rigour that has gone into creating the Seaford Town Neighbourhood Plan. Our presence in this meeting is to give voice at a late date, this 
Secretary to concern about the omission of the Dow Leisure Centre as a designated open green space and the late addition to the neighbourhood plan of the Downs as a site allocation for homes and retail development. Having been unaware until recently of the Open Green Spaces report, it is only now with hindsight that we see that not designating the Downs as a local green space seems indeed to be paving the way for extensive development proposals on this site. The Downs and Garden of Sutton Corner are in constant use by both local and wider communities of Seaford for sports, spontaneous and free recreation since over 50 years and are now under threat of development that will not only be a loss of public space but will significantly change the character and environment of this part of the town. Seaford has a deficit of recreation grounds within the town, a fact that is well documented in the neighbourhood plan. Therefore, we are appealing for the status of open green space to apply, be applied to the grounds of the Downs Leisure Centre, as quite simply, open green space is what, in fact, they are. Thank you. Um, my name is Charlotte and I'm the landlady of the Seven Sisters Park. Um, the Seven Sisters Park was placed into the Seaford Neighbourhood Plan. Um, the terminology that has been placed by Ian Gerrard, who used to be the Estates Manager for Enterprise, um, is in fact incorrect. Um, and I have got emails and have had conversations with Enterprise over the last week in order to ask for the date of 2022 to be removed as my lease is a normal lease, therefore it is a renewable lease and there is no right for them to remove me at this date. Um, although Enterprise would like the pub to remain on the site not necessarily a pub, i.e. it might possibly be the car park, to remain in the 30-year plan. They want the date of 2022 to be removed because I won't be leaving at that date. Thank you. Hey, um, agenda six, which is about the freedom of the town. Um, in January, when the... Um, Precip was set at 9.9%, told at the time that the money was for the reserve, top up the reserves, and also to um, go towards the considerable debts that the council has. Um, don't you think it's a bit frivolous to put money into the proposed proposal on Agenda 6? Um, I think that maybe there was a better way of showing appreciation for people that great things for the town, we've got loads of people that do great things for the town, is there a less cost effective way, or more sorry, more cost effective way of maybe showing this appreciation rather than spending the money that we so badly need for other things that's what we won't be addressing the neighbourhood plan points until the neighbourhood plan uh, item in uh, agenda item 5 um, but the last one um, just, just to point out the, the reason for the rise in the precept was to, to pay a debt that was never mentioned. Um, it was to, to enable us to deliver our services uh, and to, to build the council's reserves as requested by the auditor, uh, which we've been successfully doing for the last three years. Um, the uh, cost for, for uh, the honorary freeman uh, position, if agreed tonight, is, is less than £500, which is uh, less than 0.1 of a percent of council tax. Um, so the impact of, of that particular decision would be uh, in terms of the impact on the overall budget of the council. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Um, now move on to uh, item four, the minutes. Do you know the following minutes approving or not approving recommendations as required? Thank 
have them to withdraw standing orders so that uh, uh, people of Charlie can give their, um, their comment, um, presentation. Sorry. <laughs> um, and are all members happy that I withdraw standing orders at this point? Thank you. Hello everybody, um, I'll come to your points in a natural place in the presentation. I prepared the presentation not knowing that you would be making your points, so I hurriedly uh, put a, a slide at the end which, which may, may help you. Um, so, I thought I would give a presentation. Um, thank you. <laughs> Is that clear as it will go? Is that look right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, rather than just rely on, on lots of written material, we started the neighbourhood plan in April 2016, nearly three years ago. Um, and Therefore, people may well have forgotten the point of the exercise. So, um, I will be giving an overview. I won't be giving lots and lots of detail of, of what's proposed. Um, I'll, I'll be giving an overview. Um, first of all, the point I want to make is the plan is the town's plan. It's not something I've dreamt of in the bath or in the shower. We've worked very hard at consulting people um, over a long period of time. Residents questionnaire went to, which we were told every home by the people that distrib distributed it, or somebody's mentioned to me today, and they didn't get it. Um, that we did that, we, we delayed the whole exercise so that more could be delivered. So we've, we've done our uh, damnedest to get the survey out, which was to ask for initial views. Um, and I'll spend a bit longer on this than, than I really intended to do. Um, we've, he we've held five public meetings over, over that period of time, um, and which we publicised on website, Facebook, uh, um, Seaford Scene, Sussex, Sussex Express, um, even on the uh, local radio. So we've done our best to let people know what we're doing. Um, the process is we have a steering group that, surprisingly enough, attempt to steer um, what the pro how the project progresses. And those steering group meetings are open to the public. Occasionally we have bits that aren't open to the public. And that's when we're discussing site-specific issues. So there is a monetary link to the issues that we're discussing. Uh, so therefore, the public um, aren't allowed that bit. And the same tonight, there'll be some site-specific issues that we're discussing that the public uh, are not invited to. Um, we've had four focus groups drawn from local residents um, and the structure being they um, did lots of consultation. Um, we set initial ideas at a public meeting in November 2016. Um, we published documents called evidence reports that went on the website. We asked for comments. We got comments. We then revised what we uh, were proposing. Um, and then we had a further public meeting in July uh, 2017. Um, and then we had a formal consultation in um, November uh, 17. November 17. Um, we consulted. We changed what we were putting in the plan. Because we have changed what we are putting in the plan, we had to reconsult again. And we had to do some more, more work. And some of the extra work that we did was on local green spaces in connection with Brand Avenue. We set up a working party to do that so that we looked at the evidence as objectively as we possibly could. We've also, as time has gone on, published lots of, of consultation documents, the plans, etc uh, etc et um, when I when I was working in the 1960s I remember going to a union meetings worrying about the patent office I could have thought of something better to worry about really couldn't I 
This is my file, part of my document on local green spaces. We've done our damnedest to be objective uh, in the work that we've done. I'll go into more detail a, bit, a little bit later. Um, key facts to remember about Seaford and the neighbourhood plan. 30% of, of people that live in Seaford are over 65, compared to nationally 16%. Uh, and the 30% is expected to increase substantially over the period of the neighbourhood plan. The neighbourhood plan period is up to 2030. It's a long-term plan. Um, we asked people um, what they thought the neighbourhood plan should um, address. The top two, uh, the top one, was protect heritage and the character of the town. That was the top one. The second one, much to my surprise, was support tourism so businesses remain viable. A very important fact that people were, were say, saying to us. The bottom one, surprisingly enough, the 65% was provide housing that's suitable for everybody. Um, so just make those points to bear in mind. I used to think visions were all bully and waffle. To be honest, people couldn't really think what to say, so they, so they had a vision. Um, but I realised with this exercise that our vision is important to what we have done. Um, there are three, four elements to the vision. Um, certain things we want to retain, that's at the top there. Um, things we want to make greater use of, that's the sea front and heritage and national park. And Thursday, we want to improve certain things. And the neighbourhood plan has tried to do that. Not always terribly successfully, but that's what we've, what we've tried to do. And finally, ensure the sympathetic development of homes. Um, so there's a lot more to the neighbourhood plan than local green spaces and housing sites. So I'll go through the vision one by one. Those four, those four headings. First of all, we want to retain the character. That's what the vision said, and the way we do it. The conservation areas and those areas of established character. Um, and we also want to maintain the unspoiled seafront and the fantastic views. And we were so anxious about views that we conducted a special exercise that looked at the character, did a character assessment of the town and the views in the town that need to be protected. Um, and that was fed, fed into a document called the uh, General Design Guidelines for Seaford, which we got some consultants to do. And unlike many consultants, didn't borrow my watch to ask the time. They produced some good original work. Uh, you're welcome to see that, that document on, on, the, web, on the website uh, and it shows how important to us um, retaining the character of, of, the, of the town. Now, moving on to local green spaces, um, the, the greener areas are the local green spaces that we identified. Um, and I think it's probably... So I'm, I don't plan to go through those one by one. Um, you can see they tend to be on the periphery of, of the town, not entirely, because the crouch, crouch is there in the middle, Foster Close is, is also there. Um, now, this is where I will add something that I, I didn't intend saying tonight, so just excuse me whilst I try and get to the right place. Um, Um, again, there are clear, well, there are rules laid down in the National Planning um, document framework that we've simply got to adhere to. We can't, a group of us get together and have a brainstorm and say, right, we've come to these local green spaces, right, we'll do it. We've got to go through a structured process uh, 
and compare local green spaces uh, with potential local green spaces with the uh, criteria that needs to be satisfied. And you'll see there beauty. Well, isn't that easy to define? <laughs> beauty is the eyes of the beholder. We've had great difficulty, great difficulty, trying to be as objective as we possibly can. Um, the other headings are historic significance, recreational value, tranquility, richness of the wildlife, uh, and um, we need to be satisfied that it's not an extensive uh, tract of land. We can't have figures after fields. Um, now, the way that we went about this exercise was we got the, f the focus group about uh, six or eight people drawing from the town. Sylvia's here. Syl Sylvia <coughs> was, was, was one. So all the people were, were on the focus group as well. Um, we identified 60 odd sites that were green spaces. And I note the terminology. I notice you use the expression open green spaces. The town's got lots of open green spaces. Um, and in fact, there are policies in the Lewis District Council's uh, plans which relate to open green spaces. Um, and therefore, when we looked at the 66, we decided we had a sifting exercise, in, out, maybe. Um, and I've looked uh, earlier today to, to see where the downside came. Um, it was in the maybes. We, uh, so with the maybes, um, and the, the, the ones we thought looked likely to be um, satisfied the criteria, we visited each site, we took photographs, we prepared report, a, a re report on each site so that we could assess the extent to which that criteria has been satisfied. Um, the um, down site satisfied some of the criteria. It didn't satisfy all of the criteria. But the key thing that we decided was um, we, we couldn't have dozens and dozens of local green spaces. The inspector, who will look at our report, um, would say, these people don't know what they're doing. How can it be special? Because that's a key word. Um, demonstrably special to a local community and holds a particular local significance. That's, that's the criteria. We couldn't have 60 of them were special, only some of them could be special. And the way we went about uh, defining that in our minds, um, we, we said, um, are there any other policies around that should protect those sites? And in, and in the Downs, um, <coughs> in the case of the Downs, there were three um, policies that could be said those sites. One is, is in the um, core strategy, I think number eight or nine, seven. Uh, objective. Um, core policy seven. Right, core policy seven. Um, the others were, in two of others were to do with recreational space, and there were some very firm things said about the recreational space, about developing sites that are rec recreational space. Therefore, on the basis of that analysis, and visiting and photographs and discussion, we decided that the site, the down site, should be in the outs, not, not, the, not the ins. Um, now, and as I've explained earlier, we went to great lengths to consult people to ask them whether they agreed with that. At several public meetings, several um, um, documents, we wanted to listen. We asked people, in the case of um, Grand Avenue, local people united and said, we think Grand Avenue should be a local green space. We listened to people, um, and we got a working party, and we concluded, yes, it should be a local green space. Nobody mentioned to us that they thought that uh, the down site should be a local green space. The first time I've heard it mentioned was yesterday when somebody had written to James, I think. We're doing our best to be sensitive and responsive, um, but we've been going, say, nearly, nearly three years now, 
and we're, we're at the end of the process. And I'll tell you a little bit later what the, the end of the process is. Um, but let me try and go back to where I, where I was. I mentioned the producer design guide, which, um, unlike the work of any consultants, we think is very good and we're, we're pleased with it as to what it can do from the town. Um, I've mentioned local green spaces, the criteria that we use, and I've shown the ones that we've identified. Um, that's one of the local green spaces, Blackington Pond, and that's the other one, Chington Way Field. That is much more controversial, much more controversial. The landowner wants to develop that site. We don't think uh, that should be possible. That is possible because of the analysis that we've done, including looking at local green spaces. It's not local green spaces or developed. There, there, there are other shades in between. So that's what one of them. I won't go through them all. Now, the second and third um, elements of the vision make greater use of the seafront and improve the local economy. We can't do a lot with those as far as planning uh, policies are concerned, but we can do something, what we call community aspirations in the plan. Um, and we will work with Seaford Town Council and their partners at trying to achieve those two things. Um, Finally, sympathetic development. Now, <clears throat> at the centre of the government's policy is that development should be sustainable. And I thought to myself, again, is it one of these things you need in the management books that doesn't mean very much? In other words, lots of waffle. Um, I could tell you that it does mean something as far as the neighbourhood plan is concerned. And the way we are required to uh, analyse the sites in the town is by um, assessing whether each particular site is achieving sustainable development. Now the way we do that, we've got ten uh, different objectives, sustainability objectives. And I won't go th grind through them all, but they're in the report. One, housing, brownfield sites, and some other things, but that, that's the key thing to do with sustainability. Uh, we're reusing sites that have been used for, used for something else. Um, do the sites, are the locations of the sites such that walking is encouraged, cycling is encouraged, and public transport is used? So therefore, when we analyse sites, it's a long way from public transport and the shops, uh, or the doctors, um, it scores a low, a low score for that particular amount. Right, it's the first time I've mentioned it, we have a target of 185 homes, more homes than is currently planned to be um, developed in, in, in secret. Now I could wax poetic, Charlie here could be even more poetic and longer about what that means and what sites we should count in, in that. And we've, and we've had lots of fun trying to decide which sites we count towards that target. We've ended up with 11 sites, uh, all of them brownfield, um, and a total of 218 homes. We estimate now, it's all estimates, it's not black and white, it's what we think at the moment that site, can, can, those sites can deliver. Um, the last consultation, back in November, which ended the 13th of December, and I use, I emphasize that words, ended the 13th of December, um, we included Florence House and the Downs Health Complex. I've been surprised how few comments we've received on uh, either of those, but not many at all. Um, and I'll say later, just quickly show you, I'm not going to go through 
for all, all the sites. Um, and Charlie will talk a little bit of, more about the sites. Um, so you can see where they are. Whereas the green spaces tend to be around the, mainly around the outside, the sites are mainly in the middle-ish. You see what, what I mean? So here, here we have, that's Jermaine Fords, that's the Dane Valley, etc. Uh, et that's Jerry Orris, Hyundai um, Garage, that's on the 259 coming in. Now, it's not surprising that we've identified those sites as being suitable, because we have to assess them against the sustainability criteria. So, close to the bus route, close to the station, but close to doctor's surgery, and so on. Um, and that'll change, and that'll change, we, know, we all know that. Um, but we've done our best to be objective, and we've actually employed independent consultants to look at all our sites and to compare them with the sustainability objectives. So it's not our views, it's the views of, of professional planners. Um, Dane Valley is an important part of the development. Charlie will come to that uh, later. Um, and then, just to summarise what the comments that we've got, we got 73 comments, that was all, on the second consultation ending the 13th of December. Um, Grand Avenue, uh, surprise, surprise. Is anybody here from Grand Avenue area today? Right, one of the few, oh right, hello. Yes, oh, Alison, hi. yes. Most, most steering group meetings we've had somebody who's interested in, in, in Grand Avenue. Um, so it's 60% Grand Avenue, 20% other comments from members of the public. And then finally, in round figures, 10% from the landowners or their professional advisors, uh, and 10% from strategy consultees, like um, East Sussex County Council, Environment Agency, etc., etc. Future. Um, hoping we will have the council's agreement tonight to uh, refer the plan to Lewis District Council. And again, I'm still a bit longer on this than I, than I really intended to. Um, the District Council will um, issue the documents uh, online, make predominantly if not complete, and make some do documents available for people to inspect. Um, and the key purpose of that, it's not a full consultation like we've done, is to make sure that we've listened to what people have said to us in the consultation exercise, which is finished. So if you want to make comments about the, uh, the Downs site, that will be your opportunity. The Regulation 16, that will be in about two months' time, probably, if everything go, goes smoothly. Um, then, uh, once that con has been conducted, Lewis City Council will appoint an examiner, a professional planner, who's steeped in, in all this complex mumbo-jumbo, some would say, um, and um, be referred to the examiner, and he can throw anything out. He can say the sites are nonsense, doesn't agree with them, local green spaces, um, nonsense, shouldn't have those, but that's a really crunch time. So we have to be, do our best to get the balance right between the right amount of facts and figures and arguments as to why we've done something. Uh, and at the same time, be reasonable, that the inspector says, well, these people are not going mad and identifying lots and lots of local green spaces, they can't possibly be special. Um, so, we then have to amend the plan, amend the plan as necessary. And the inspector could throw the whole thing out. What have I been doing with my life in nearly three years for the inspector to throw it out? Um, assuming we get that far, there'll then be a referendum. All residents of the town will be invited to vote in a referendum. If more than 50% of people vote in favour of the plan, it will be uh, made, as the way they call it, implemented. And then the plan will become um, a Lewis District Council planning policy, which um, developers and the planners will need to take into account 
when people apply for planning permission. Um, so, here knows we're seeking uh, agreement tonight to the neighbourhood plan itself, the sustainability appraisal, and that's the 150 pages that go, looks about sustainability and assesses each site, the secret design guide, and the local green spaces report. Right, that's my bit. I'll pass over to Charlie, who we're extremely fortunate at having on the team. As unlike me, he knows something about planning, as his job for many years was involved <coughs> in the Housing Association and planning. <coughs> I, I'm an expert on planning. Yeah, everybody realises that. I've had two extensions to my house done at different times of the year. And that's my knowledge of planning until I started on this uh, exercise. Charlie knows something about it. Fine. Thank you. I just want to give some, an update to the two policies that relate to housing within the neighbourhood plan. That's uh, SEA 15 and SEA 16. Uh, now, the main policy that deals with the provision of 218 homes is really important because every single site, as Keith has said, is a brownfield site. When we started the process, <clears throat> we did not have enough sites within the Brownville category and had to go uh, with um, Grand Avenue uh, as a possibility. But by July 2017, we found additional sites that meant we could be 100% Brownville sites. That's really important because, as you can see, uh, Lewis has a, 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 a policy RE1 uh, which deals with recreation space within the town. And we did the calculations and the town has a, de a deficit of recreation space. So that any, any um, square meterage of green space within the town that has to be developed for housing exacerbates the problem. So we, ever since the first public consultation event uh, in um, November 2017, we have had an all-brownfield site um, uh, uh, proposal. Uh, but there are within um, the, uh, the requirements laid on us the need to demonstrate that our proposal not only is sustainable, but achievable. And there was some concern as to whether some of the brownfield sites could be achieved or not. As a result of that, we secured £40,000 from locality who support the neighbourhood planning process, and they produced a report saying that the Dane Valley project could produce up to 161 homes if developed in its entirety as an entity. Um, we have only allowed 131 in our base figures for the entire site. And we have excluded two sites specifically because two of the owners wanted to retain their interest during the site of the plan. Uh, and so at the moment you will see that 131 uh, figure comes down to 104, of which 74 count towards the total of 185. So it's a significant proportion, and therefore the question is whether we have put all our eggs in, uh, and some of them rattled in that basket. As a result of owners <coughs> putting on those sites, putting their hands in their pocket and making a physical contribution to the cost of a second survey, a costing another £40,000, which was funded partly by Lewis District Council, partly by East Sussex County Council, and the owners who wanted to participate. We have received a draft report from the same consultants that did the first report, ACOM. And in their summary, uh, 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 and uh, it's a draft report, so as I say, we are expecting the final report, but uh, it's, it, this is sort of almost breaking news. They say, <clears throat> The viability su assessment suggests the Dane Valley sites can be allocated with development with some degree of confidence in deliverability, although some flexibility may be required as it's unlikely to generate 40% affordable housing across the whole site. 
under a traditional development model. The modeling results indicate an affordable housing level of 25% could yield a viable scheme. Now my passion is to get 100% affordable on that side because we only have 185 homes that we have to find on new sites. And some of those are small, and some of them do not generate a significant uh, affordable percentage in the normal planning terms. So as a result of that, with the agreement of the owners, with the agreement of Lewis District Council and Eastbourne Borough Council, we have secured the services of Guinness Trust, a registered housing association with 150 years experience of providing affordable homes. They are um, taking this proposal for the Dane Valley project to their board next month to get approval. It should be a done deal from the soundings out that have been made of the board already. What they can, and I'm really pleased that only 25% affordable housing is coming through the planning route. Because as we all know, the planning affordability definition is 80% of market value, which is not affordable by many people in this town. So the lower the percentage required under the planning route is uh, uh, better for our point of view, because it means more can be funded by grant to provide both affordable rent and affordable shared ownership. That's really important because those are affordable rent, <coughs> more like council rents. Yeah, and so it means that that is. I, I use the strap by local housing for local people because if it's provided by grant, then a nominations agreement will ensure that it's local people who get the first pick of that. That's really, really important. So we have the prospect on the Dane Valley. Um, uh, a under advice from ACOM that the scheme is viable, and B, through the Guinness Trust, of providing 100% affordability on the homes that come there. They say that we can increase the number of homes above what we've got in the neighbourhood plan. So although we are already above our target of 185, because we've got sites totaling 218, we have a latent reserve within the figure for Dane Valley of, you know, ensuring over-programming and therefore ensuring we hit our target. So um, that's, that, that we had a meeting last Friday, I think it was, with the neighbourhood plan people at Lewis, and they are satisfied with the ACOM report saying that the scheme is viable. And so from that point of view, you should be assured uh, that it's a, a it's an achievable part of the neighbourhood plan, whereas before there was some uncertainty. Um, and as I say, we expect the final report to come out next month, and that will be posted on the website so that everyone can see it, as it will be in the public domain. The owners have agreed, although they paid for part of it, they've agreed that it should be for the public domain and therefore accessible by anyone who wants to scrutinise the work that's been done. So that deals with the, the Dane Valley project. Because an issue was raised tonight about the Seven Sisters Club and the Downs, I just want to cover both of those. <coughs> uh, on the Seven Sisters, um, I, I've spoken to Charlotte, and we are keeping it in, because although there is some uncertainty about the legal status as far as enterprise is there's no uncertainty as far as Charlotte's concerned. There are always two parties. Uh, and it is because you need if you take a site out of the neighbourhood plan, you cannot put it back in. If it then is developed, it becomes unidentified. And we know that we've got a socking great unidentified site down the road called Newlands, which doesn't, it contributes to the district-wide total. It does not contribute to the Seaford's total. And what we want to make sure is that every single home that is eligible counts against the 185, and we don't get others coming in through the back door by that route. And the same applies for the downs. <coughs> Putting the downs in does not guarantee the delivery, yeah, because Lewis District Council has got to go through a whole planning process in order to ensure that it is delivered, and, 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 and 
it can fail at any stage. <coughs> As things stand at the moment, though, again, if we exclude those units from our neighbourhood plan, they too could come back as unidentified. And that's the last thing we want. We want to get value from every new home that's being provided uh, that is new. And so that's why we've got the 11 sites that we have. Uh, Jeff, over to me. Thank you. <coughs> Um, I don't want to, um, I'll take uh, um, some questions, but if you can keep it brief. Yeah, sorry, no, this evening, I mean, I was part of this anyway from 2016, from the beginning, I was on the focus group. A couple of contradictory statements and conflicting statements is that the fact is the Downs has just appeared since the second regulation 14, and I know that. Um, we had it in and assessed and the reason we didn't designate it as a green space is because it was agreed by the focus group that it was very well protected. It has a lot of policies on it, district-wide policies, mm -hmm. RE1s, RE2s, core policy 7, that are sports recreation, existing recreational space. The conflicting thing is you're saying that we always should build on Brownfield. Are you now telling me that the Downsville Centre falls under Brownfield? Yeah. Because it should be Greenfield, not Brownfield. Mm -hmm. So that's the contradictory. Okay. Secondly, as it's got existing policies on it, Lewis District policies, surely with the, the development there, we're reducing the green space, not expanding. So we're actually, Lewis District, by reducing green space, is going against its own, its own policies. So I'm a little bit concerned <laughs> about yeah, that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> As far as the Brownfield site is concerned, I'm using shorthand, but when I put those um, headings on the screen, what in fact the sustainability objective for housing says, to deliver in the first instance on Brownfield sites, high quality, new, open market and affordable homes that meet the needs of the whole community, both now and in the future. So we're not saying only brown, we're aiming to have only brownfield sites. But we've got to recognise that we might need other sites in order to reach our target. And we're dealing with lots of uncertainty, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. We looked at the issue of brownfield, particularly in connection, first of all, with Florence House. Anyone looking at, at Florence House could say, that development in the garden is greenfield because there's been no buildings on the particular part of the garden uh, that now are proposed to have homes. The advice that came back from our consultants and from those district council is no, if there are buildings on the site already, then it is deemed to be brownfield. And so, by extension, the Downs uh, is brownfield. Uh, at the moment, the proposals indicate the housing will be on that part of the site that relates to the over 60s club and uh, what looks like a sort of a bowling green, but uh, I don't think it's used much by that. So in other words, because it's an integral part of an entire site, uh, it is brownfield in, 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 in that definition. So that, uh, there is no contradiction, and 11 of the sites, all 11, are brownfield. I hope that clarifies that. Yes, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, let's come back to the consultation process. Is that, if I understood this rightly, the consultation process started in October 2018 and no, finished no. the last one, and for the of the Downs. The, yeah. last, the last one. Yeah. And ended in December 18, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Having seen now the, as an observation as a non-member of the council, look at the percentages or how many people actually commented. Don't, are you not worried about um, the significance of the decision you made based on very, very small numbers of returns or feedback? I'm worried all the time. Because I want to speak to you in I'm worried all the time. We can't say to people, you must comment. We do our best no, to not, the opportunity. But it's not you, because you are representing a one member of the Never. So what I appreciate is a lot of work went into this, but a yeah. very important decision will be made based on this side, which the lady quite rightly said. 
there seems to be a play of words if you say that it's a brownfield side, but we understand it's a greenfield side. There seems to be somewhere a dispute already. Yeah. Can I just say the reason that Florence House Garden was changed uh, in our assessment from greenfield to brownfield was it was a judicial review by Braves End Council, and the, and the decision was that's what the decision was. Um, look, we, we are dealing with lots of greys in this, where uh, there is no absolutes in any of this. <coughs> We're trying to make judgment based on the best information available to us. And if I would have loved to have had a lot more comments, but bearing in mind we've already had a couple of hundred comments back 12 months previously on the proposals in fact these are just additions yeah. small relatively small additions um, how do how do you get people to comment if they don't want to do it I, I want to not be seen as antagonistic because yeah. really, really no, appreciate no, no, a lot of work you're putting into this yeah. but you probably understand if you ask anybody here how many people have been have received at the time a request for consultation. No. How many no. people? You'll no. be surprised how little Since the number is actually people being aware there's a consultation going, etc. etc. So I'm not saying again, I have to underline it's not anti antagonistic, there is an issue mm -hmm. about this really. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just, to, just to point out the legality of the consultation, um, we uh, we employed an independent delivery company to deliver mm -hmm. the documents to uh, 100% of the households in Seaford. Now, I see people shaking their heads, but what happens, uh, what we don't control is what happens when they go through the door of people's letterboxes. We all get papers that come through the door, and for one reason or another, we ignore them. No, 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 no
However, it does remain that a lot of people did not take part in it for whatever reasons. And I wonder what is the demographic of the people that did take part in it? Because a lot of people who are perhaps have, um, are looking after families or in work, maybe there are less of those people that have been able to dedicate their time and focus to such an exercise. And perhaps people who are older, perhaps, I don't know, but perhaps they are able to dedicate more time to that. Um, and the, the point does still remain that the addition of the Downs at a late stage would have only really been brought to the attention to a smaller slice of people who were interested in the neighbourhood plan because the bulk of that work had already happened and, and people had consulted on that, had given their feedback. So at this point, very little feedback was maybe given and at the same time, that you were looking at a specific site and whether it could be included, but there is a, a, a community that lives around the frame of that site. No leaflets were put through our door about the designation of this site. It has a covenant on it. Whether it's legally binding or not, this is not the issue. Those people would assume, in fact, a lot of people in Seaford would assume that because of the history of the dams, that it would never, and, and because of its use, its blatant use, every weekend there are matches on it, there are dog walkers every day, people would just not assume that it wouldn't be designated as, sorry, not an open, but a local green space. So we would not be looking to see, looking for challenges to that. So for people who, you know, like ourselves, it's, it's just come completely to our awareness through the announcement of the development in September. The, the addition was very late yeah, of this site in the neighbourhood yeah. plan. Yeah. And that is really the point that I would like to make. I think it's a fair point. However, um, going back to the point that was made by our two volunteers here, um, the, the inclusion of it uh, as a development site uh, does not mean that it will become a development site. But equally, by, if we were to exclude it, it would not count towards the allocation of housing that Seaford has to take. It would become an unidentified site, which would mean that if we have to achieve the 195, if for whatever reason some of the other sites, we've heard this contention around the Seven Sisters site tonight, for example, if for whatever reason some of the other sites weren't delivered, and as a result, um, we did not achieve the 185 and we hadn't allocated that site, but that site then is developed as housing, those houses will not count towards our 185. Now the net result of that would be, we would have to find, and there isn't any brownfield sites left in Seaford, we know that, we would then definitely be looking at building on a greenfield site. So by including it at this stage, it's not guaranteeing the, it's not guaranteeing that will be housing. That has got to go through the planning process still. There's an awful lot of work to be done on that. And in our neighbourhood plan, we're only looking at the corner section. We're not looking at the, the doctor's section in terms of that's allocated. So the loss of the sports field or anything like that is not happening as a result of what we are saying. It is purely just the corner where the, the over 60s club is, and that's allocated as eight housing units as well as the shops beneath. But taking it out could be detrimental to the town in the long run. And that's the reason why we've left it in. That's why it's dropped in. So it's only done. come about and come in because of the health hub. If West District hadn't yeah. put forward the proposal for the health hub, it wouldn't have even been considered for development. Because when I looked at it, as a focus group back in 2016 or just after, it was considered it had heavy policies for its recreational use. Yeah. Yeah. And the development that was already existing on it was too small <laughs> to fit the criteria for housing development, so we couldn't put it through anyway. It's only been extended and added because of the health hub. The development will only take place because yeah. of the health hub. We're not, we're not arguing with that. No. We're not arguing that's, with that. That's, that it doesn't, we don't, we're not disagreeing with that point you, you made. As, as a neighbour plan, we don't have to put it forward, because it's, it's almost as if it's the health no, hub. The reason, it's different yeah. driving yeah. Ways. The, so the reason it's in as a housing site is because if it does happen, it then will be it will then be unidentified, which means it doesn't count our 185. But if we don't have that in our 185, then our 185 is not achieved, then we will have to find the planners, not the people in Seaford, will then have to find somewhere to deliver houses on probably a greenfield site, because there isn't any brownfield sites. 
So by including it, we are saying that if it does happen, it counts towards our 185. There's a, we're not saying it's going to happen because there's an awful lot, we all know, there's an awful lot of hurdles for that to happen through the planning process. And the points you've raised about, you know, we've got those covenants, there's, there's, a, there's the limitations within the local plan. All of those issues are going to be dealt with through the planning process. If they are successful, then we've won in terms of the counts towards our 185. If they're not successful, then that's fine as well. It doesn't make any difference. But if we don't put it in the neighbourhood plan, both ways we lose. You know, we, we don't achieve anything. The number of housing, I, I don't know if I've understood this, obviously I'm not an expert in housing at all, but if there's 185, that is the requirement that you've, uh, you've identified brownfield sites for 218, eight of which will be on the garden of the, on the southern corner, yeah? Eight of them on the southern corner. As that is such a contentious site, as you can now see, Oh, you know, let's come forward. Why, why is that so vital? Because they're additional. Mm. 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 Oh, yeah, but, it, but only eight, but at the expense of a garden. And I just have to say that people do use that garden I understand. all the time. No, I understand that. It, I think, um, yeah. Go back a point. If, if it's not in the neighbourhood plan, that doesn't stop it happening. It, it, no, it doesn't make any difference. It really doesn't make any difference because of the what's happening with the, the health hub. It, it, all it makes a difference <coughs> by the neighbourhood plan is it counts towards our 185 and we don't have to have another room of residents coming in saying the district council have decided to build on the green field next to where we are and it's because you didn't put that in our plan and it's our good housing so we're using another green site. That is the reason it's in there. It's got to be in there for that reason because we're protecting green spaces by putting it in there. This is not going to determine if it happens. The issues you've rightly raised around the restrictions, covenants, and everything like that is what will determine if it is built on, not the not the neighbourhood plan. Okay, so now I think we'll no, have to wrap it up. Thank yeah. you. Can I just re reiterate what, what I said earlier? There's a, a Regulation 16 consultation exercise by the Lewis District Council within the next couple of months. Then that is your opportunity to register what you're saying today. And my advice to you would be to look at the criteria um, that I brought up, the uh, paragraph 100 of the National Planning Framework, and go through each one and say why you argue that it should be a local green space. And then the inspector can decide whether it should be a local green space or not. It's not too late. Whatever you say will be copied to the inspector. So you've got a direct access to the inspector. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. 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 I think we'll um, move on now. Yeah. Um, I think we've, uh, we've got to discuss some confidential papers um, where we require the public to leave now. Can, can I just emphasize the reason you confidential to include personal data, which we're not allowed to discuss in public. If you want to come back in, we can. You can wait outside and come back in. I don't. I don't. How long would you estimate this is going to take? Thank you for your patience. Um, I'm going to bring in so many orders again. So I think it's separate. That means that we can't have any, uh, any more comments now. Okay, so agenda item five. <laughs> 
And also to take out the and you know, to take out the um, the eight properties that has been allocated um, for that. And my reasons are, are, quite, are quite based. I think, in principle, we all support the um, the proposed L top. But this this region tonight is not about the L top. It's about protecting green space in our town and re recreational space in our town. Um, if you look at the um, criteria for uh, recreational space. Um, it meant she talks about um, the, the um, importance to the town, uh, it's it our amenities, it talks about um, the loss of amenity to, to, to the town. Um, the, the proposal to uh, that, the, that, that Newlands can be used as a green space isn't actually viable. Newlands is actually not, 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 not on yet. We don't actually have a football space in the town that can be used as an alternative. Both the souls both, um, both Obama Road and both the Crouch are actually oversubscribed. Mm -hmm. And I think to, 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 it would be a shame if we let this space go. So I ask, I ask everyone tonight to think about it very, very strongly, regardless of the view about what about the downs. This, this isn't about the, the, the proposed health of, this is, about, this is about saving vital green space for our children and our children's yeah. children. children. So, and I will ask you, therefore, to use, you, you've got the power tonight to save that green space for Seaford, to save that green space for, for, for all our children, and I'm asking you tonight to vote to include that, to include, not to lose vital recreation in the space. What I totally understand, um, well, what, yeah, so I, I, this isn't going against what's been done, but this is asking you to do that something, and I said, I'm, 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 I'm making that amendment, and I hope I do get a second there. Um, the, the notion that um, not including, or in, including the eight, eight, yeah, eight properties, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's kind of um, contradictory because again, it's been said that if we, if, if we, if we, if the proposal um, eight properties on the down, if that if, if that goes ahead, that will that won't count towards that. But it's, it's only eight. It is insignificant in, in terms of 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 of, 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 of the properties. So, if, so um, if we by include by by including that, that in, in the neighborhood plan, we're actually making it less likely that, that it will be built on. So again, I will ask that, that we do include the, the, the um, that, the, that, so that we, we do take off the eight properties from the neighborhood plan, because it, including it means it will be built on. So I, I, my amendment, therefore, is, is that we do um, include the, um, the, 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 the question of screen space and, and take away the eight properties from the, the neighborhood plan. Chair. If I can, just a couple of um, just really legalities to point yeah. out on that proposal. Um, the first one is to, to include some of these green space now would require we go back and do Regulation 14 consultation again. We can't make a decision tonight to add green space to the, the neighbourhood plan. It's, that time has passed unless we decide to do another, well, how long does it take? Three months? To do a three month consultation, which would then take us to May, so we, we'd be then looking at in July. To adopt the neighbourhood plan as a council, so it would be a, a realistically a five month delay, and there's no guarantee it would meet the criteria. Uh, the, 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 wood, the green space group would have to assess it, and the key I think the key element that's been stressed tonight is it has to be special. Um, I was a little bit unsure as to whether you were proposing the green space be the bit of land just next to the uh, over 60s club, or we're proposing the land that's the football pitch. Football pitch. Okay, well the football pitch is not in the neighbourhood plan at all. And a football pitch in its own right, um, I think is highly unlikely to be classed as a, a green space because it's not special. I appreciate the point about shortage of uh, sports fields and we're making 
inroads to change that at the moment with the district council, but um, through the pen pitch strategy that we're doing. But to, to consider making that green space, we would have to defer the decision tonight. It's not something we can make that decision on tonight to add it. Um, going back to the eight, the, the second part of the proposal, I think, is the eight units. Um, the issue with the eight units, and I, I agree, it is only eight, um, but we've, we've had discussions tonight about um, several sites. Um, if the home field place site is 19 units, we're at 218, so that brings us down to 199. We've got to have 185. If we lose the eight from that, that brings us down to 191. We've also got the issue around um, the Seven Sisters. If the Seven Sisters end up not being developed, because there's still a point of contention on that, that would take us below the 185. So the, the actual eight is, is actually very important that it's there, because it gives us that little bit of insulation that if we lose potentially those two sites, we are still over the 185. If we lose those two sites and this site, we would be below the 185. Can I just look at you, Jeff? Okay, and I, another option would be to actually have two different, I, I think I'm take your first point about the recreation space, but I think we can, I'm still, I stand by my amendment of um, the eight units um, inclusion in, in, in there. So I, I would maybe just, I, I would, like to have two, I mean, two separate amendments. One is for the eight units on its own, and the second one will be for the recreation, um, the recreation space on its own. How, how does that sound? Well, if you, if, you're, if, the, if the space is agreed to, that that's actually the fair end of yeah, 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 the yeah, adoption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that. If okay. Yeah. yeah. So if, if so. it's the if it's just the eight units, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. that would be a decision to take those out of the out of the plan. Yeah. But you know, the, I've got a advise you that if we do do that, the key thing that we discussed in the public participation, the consequence is that if that does get approved, then there will be unidentified sites that won't count towards our 185. So even if we if we lose the home field place and we lose the Seven Sisters, and that site is developed, we will still be below 185. That's the consequence. So we'll then have to find a greenfield site to build on, because there isn't any brownfield left. Well, again, I don't want to turn this into a debate, but again, yeah. the inclusion of it makes it more likely that it will be built on. I mean, we, we said tonight, but we, 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 we said tonight that, 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 that the neighborhood plan is, 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 is powerful. I mean, if it's, if, it's, if it's not powerful, it's not powerful. If it's powerful, then let's use it to protect something. We, we, we can't have it both ways. And then say, well, it's powerful, but it's not that powerful. So I don't buy that given. So, my, my given and so therefore my proposal, and I hope I can get a second there, is that we take the eight properties out. But my, I still stand by that it makes it less likely that it will be built on um, if we don't have, have it there. And, and so I hope I get a second there. And if it fails, it fails. Yeah, that's okay. fine. All I'm doing is giving you the facts. Yes, that's fine. We've already got the proposal on the table, and it's if Councillor Brown would accept your amendment. If it doesn't, then... I, I, I need to get a second if I can get a second. Oh. Yeah, but we have we've all yeah. But, but if the councillor Brown's um, proposal fails, then we can go on to yours. Okay. Yeah. Councillor Brown. 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 It's premature, really, to make a decision with regards to those eight properties because it's a planning issue. There are all sorts of um, uh, policies that will come into play to make a decision as to whether or not those eight properties are, or eight apartments or whether they are built. Uh, we're not really, I don't think we're in a position to decide on that tonight. It's a planning matter, isn't it? Councillor Thank you, Joe. Yeah, and just to um, get um, from Charles, uh, when we were earlier on with his comment to the um, Seven Sisters, obviously, um, I'd just like the redaction of the um, second, paragraph. second paragraph of that, please. And also, that there's this, I'm devil in the detail here, is regard to the uh, Seven Sisters pub. It's actually the car park. There's, there's an error in, in the way that that's written. Could you get that rectified as well? The, the area says the Seven Sisters pub, but it's the Seven Sisters car park. No, it's the pub and the car park. It's the whole site. Okay, you're saying it's the whole site. Including the public, right? Okay. Right. Yes, 
I think Councillor Brown's proposal was as per the recommendations. Yeah, recommendations mm. together, yes, and it was seconded by Council and so if there's no other questions, um, we'll the Okay, so the, the first vote is in respect of the uh, recommendations as presented, um, uh, and first proposed and seconded. So all those in favour, um, starting with uh, Councillor Adonaji. Against. Councillor Argent. No. Councillor Barnum. Against. Councillor Brown. No. Councillor Elton. No. Councillor Lindsay Freeman. Four. Councillor Olivia Honeyman. Four. Councillor Richard Honeyman. Four. Councillor Alan Latham. Four. Councillor Lord. Four. Councillor Laura. Four. Councillor Walraven. Four. Councillor Weymouth. And Councillor Webb. Four. Okay, that's carried. Um, <coughs> so the, the second one follows by default. some of that contribution this evening. It's not only the, the labour of plan that uh, he's contributed to, but to the general well-being of the town of Seaford. So I support that recommendation. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hummel. Thank you. I was for that one. Sorry, we're sitting there too long. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I'd now like to support the, the nomination for, for um, Keith, Keith Blackburn. Um, since being a councillor, um, I've seen how much work Keith actually does around the town, um, mm. especially as being on the SCP as well. It's, it's, he, he does get involved with so, so many um, different areas which people don't necessarily um, think, take time. They do, of course. Um, his knowledge is, of his, his professional life is really carried on to his time as a partner, and I think he's, he, he, does, he does take this to very, 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 very seriously. And so I thoroughly recommend what, what we're it wants to fund us tonight. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. I have nothing spoken to add, really. I think um, Mr. Blackburn has had a pretty extensive interview tonight. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I'd like to congratulate him for his work on that. Three years, I mean, if anyone yeah. understand that, they deserve anything. Um, but also, not, not, not only in the neighbourhood plan, but uh, you know, Keith is chairman of Seaford Community Partnership, uh, Seaford Tree Wardens. Natural History Society and is a board member, member of Impact Seaford. And since coming to Seaford in 2006, uh, he's used that 13 years, he's got, he's, he's got straight into it. Uh, he's, he's in the position now to help generate income from the town, uh, for the town, um, not for himself. Uh, he, all his actions are entirely voluntary. And uh, I would like to propose that we uh, accept this young lady. Thank you. Yeah, I'll keep being brief, um, again, uh, even though I've disagreed with Keith tonight, um, I very, very much value his work. I mean, I've worked with Keith for the past eight years, um, and I know what, what, what you've done and achieved for the town. And say so thank you very much. And I, I think what, what, what something we always forget, and if I, I remember with my going to the song every Sunday, the, um, the, the um, open, open, open gym. That he, how, oh, yeah. how, yeah, be, 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 and how you were instrumental to, to actually getting that into, into, into Seaford, and now you, you fought very, very hard. And so, on behalf of everyone, I say thank you very much and well deserved. Sorry. 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 Sorry.
number seven, uh, to note the annual investment strategy, further update and approve the place of the funds in the CCLA local authority doctor fund, and we have three recommendations here. Yes, Madam Mayor. Um, this council's already agreed that we should uh, go into an investment strategy. Uh, the, uh, also the town clerk and uh, the uh, finance manager have looked very carefully into the situation and they've come up with the best plan to see the town council to at least get some um, kind of money back on the investments that we're making. So I therefore feel that we should accept this contribution. Not to do, do all three together. Do you want to propose it? Yes, I do. I propose it. <laughs> and can I have a second of that, please? Yeah, just, um, I think it's, I suppose I said earlier, but it's something to do about the annual report on that, and I just felt that it might be expected to have a bit more of a quarterly, perhaps, back to report back to the council as to how that we're doing. <coughs> it's a significant amount of money that's going in on that investment, and Obviously, just with, I'm not saying I don't just trust the um, RFA or the, or the clerk, but I just thought it'd be better to have a bit of a quarterly response as to how that was doing. Because the times have changed, you've noted the times have changed with Brexit and stuff like that, and just to just, just, just assure the council that things are okay or not okay. Thank you. In, a, in effect, that does happen anyway. Yeah. With the, um, the finance uh, bank records on yesterday. Uh, is done by the chairman of finance. Um, so any interest that we receive is, is not good enough. So when he does his quarterly uh, bank reconciliation, it's uh, from, I'm not sure that this particular account, uh, because it's a property investment account, we actually only get annual statements on it, as far as I understand. Um, so that there wouldn't be, unlike the other money we've invested, which is mentioned, I think, in here, uh, we, get, yeah, we, get, we get that monthly, so we know exactly how we're doing it. It's not because it's just like a normal savings account. But this is different, um, so it will be handled. But when we get the figures through, it will go through the bank reconciliation that the finance committee will see every quarter. So you will get what you're asking for. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I'll second it. Thank you.